A little less than 400 years ago, in 1527, England sent out the first recorded expedition in search of the North Pole. Eighty years later, in 1607, Henry Hudson made his historic voyage. From that time on, for 275 years, Great Britain held the record, slowly pushing the reading up to 83 degrees, 20 minutes north latitude. Then, in 1882, the lead came to the United States. Thirteen years later, Norway went to the front. And in 1900, a member of the Royal House of Italy, the Duke of the Abruzzi, grasped the blue ribbon. Six years later, the United States took the lead again with a record of 87 degrees, six minutes. So matters stood in the spring of 1908, when the Peary Arctic Club of New York City was fitting out its last North Polar Expedition. This club is an organization made up of men prominent in business and social circles, some of them of international reputation. Its president is General Thomas H. Hubbard, its vice president, Zenas Crane, and its secretary, Herbert L. Bridgman. The avowed object which this club placed before itself was the attainment of the North Pole for the prestige and honor of the United States of America. The work divided itself into two parts. First, the driving of a specially constructed ship to a point within striking distance of the pole, and then the projection of a sledge body from the ship across the ice of the polar sea to the pole itself. The key of the problem was the negotiation of the 413 miles of icy chaos extending from Cape Columbia, the northernmost point of all North American lands, to the pole. The expedition left New York on the 6th of July, 1908, in the steamer Roosevelt, built by the club and commanded by Captain Robert A. Bartlett, was reviewed by President Roosevelt and steamed northward, arriving at Cape York, North Greenland, the 1st of August. Eskimos, dogs, furs, and so forth were obtained in the Eskimo country, and on the 18th of August, the Roosevelt steamed north through the narrow, ice-encumbered channels forming the American gateway to the pole. Winter quarters at Cape Sheridan on the north coast of Grant Land, 450 miles from the pole, were reached September 5th. Here, the expedition wintered, hunting, making equipment, and transporting supplies westward to Cape Columbia. The first division of the Northern Sledge Party left the Roosevelt February 15, 1909, the last division February 22nd. The entire Sledge Party left Cape Columbia heading due north March 1st. The expedition comprising 24 men, 19 sledges, 133 dogs. Four successive supporting parties in command of Macmillan, Borup, Marvin, and Bartlett returned at various intervals, the last in command of Bartlett from the 88th parallel. The main party under my command, six men, five sledges, 40 dogs, pushed forward by forced marches to the pole itself where it arrived the 6th of April, 1909. Here, in the midst of great fields of heavy ice, covering an ocean two miles or more in depth, with the sun circling round the sky day after day without setting, the stars and stripes were planted, and a record left with a piece of the flag. Returning, we left the pole April 7th, and after a series of forced marches, regained Cape Columbia the 23rd of April, and the Roosevelt the 27th. July 18th, the Roosevelt started south, and September 5th reached the wireless station at Indian Harbor, Labrador, from whence the message, stars and stripes nailed to the North Pole, was sent flashing over the world. The discovery of the North Pole stands for the inevitable victory of courage, persistence, experience over all obstacles. In the discovery of the North Pole is written the final chapter of the last of the great geographical stories of the Western Hemisphere, which began with the discovery of the New World by Columbus. Here is the cap and climax, the finish, the closing of the book on 400 years of history. The discovery of the North Pole on the 6th of April, 1909, by the last expedition of the Peary Arctic Club, means that the splendid frozen jewel of the North for which through centuries men of every nation have struggled and suffered and died, is won at last and is to be worn forever by the stars and stripes.